Hi, this is Brent from Theoretically Practical, and today we're gonna to be taking this old foot pedal from my Miller Dial Arc 250 HF TIG welder and converting it so that it's also a hand control. Now, a foot control, you use your foot to operate it. Uh, these controls are great at a bench, they give you a lot of control, but if you're standing underneath a car or in an awkward position or even laying on your back and you wanna weld up some exhaust or whatever, this becomes a difficult option. And what's a lot nicer would be a hand control. So in this case, it's gonna be a little linear potentiometer, possibly with a spring return that just sits right there and you'll be able to drive it back and forth with your thumb as you're welding to control it, just like, uh, just, just, just like you would with a pedal. I learned on one of these uh, style setups. Uh, unfortunately, the adapters that you would need to get something off the shelf to just work with my machine, uh, you can't really find them anymore. They are quite expensive, again, when you do find them. And, you know, if something ever went wrong with it, you're, you're really pretty hosed. What we're gonna do to make that work is we're gonna mount this guy right here. This is a Actuonics linear servo motor. It puts out enough force, more than enough force to drive the pedal. And we'll be actually mounting it inside the case. So you won't even be able to see it. There'll be probably a little plug on the side that you'll have to plug and unplug to enable and disable that mode. But because it's pushing up from the bottom, you won't, you won't need to disconnect anything. It's just gonna push up the pedal from the bottom. And when you wanna use it with your foot, you just push with your foot. When you wanna use it with the hand control, you just move the hand control. That's gonna be it. First step is gonna be to open up this pedal box, take a look at what's inside, where we can mount things uh, for real and, and figure that out. We're also gonna be uh, taking the, the pivot pin out of here because I think this side is worn because I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm pushing on the pivot point and it acts like there's a, about a 16th of an inch of slop. And actually that slop is the difference between that torch turning on and turning off. So we're gonna try to tighten that up because I've had a few issues with this pedal not turning off unless I snap it back uh, hard. So yeah, let's begin. Oh, that's a big spring in there. That's gonna be awesome to remove. I'll replace, I mean. Come on, there we go. Okay, so yeah, there's big spring in there, which um, I'm not looking forward to that. Um, but right here, you see that's pretty wallered out, or can you see? Let's put it right there. But this one right here, we're getting a little movement there. These are still pretty tight, but what I can do probably is I'm gonna go to the hardware store and see if I can get some bronze bushings and uh, press them in there. It's not as much as it seems that it seemed like though. I might do something with plastic or I don't, I'm not sure yet. But let's keep opening her up though. Come on. So you can see inside of this, what you really have is you've got this little trigger switch here, which uh, when the whole thing's all the way up, tells it not to turn the power on. And then when it comes down, it tells it to turn the power on. And then the amount of power is, uh, is right here. And this is essentially the exact same thing as a potentiometer, but the voltage that travels through here is much, much higher. This is gonna mean that you can't just do this with a simple, small electronic device. You can't duplicate it with an Arduino. I looked into that. I mean, the carbon wiper on this thing is the size of a crayon. So um, I'm gonna get an air hose and blow this all out though. I'm gonna put the pedal back together without the spring, just for my own sake. Okay, so welcome back. I, uh, I kind of went through and did some of this without videotaping it because this is already gonna be too long like all of my videos. So uh, what I ended up doing is I went to the hardware store and I would have liked to get four 
uh, bushings with the shoulder on it, but they only had three. So I took two of them and cut the heads off for this part because the, the bolt that holds that pivot in will hold these in place. So they can just kind of just push in there. They, they fit pretty tight. Uh, and then on the inside, I took a little piece of that same bushing and cut a little little ring off of it. And what I actually did is I soldered it in place. And you can solder steel to bronze. I'd say the only negative side of doing that is uh, I would have preferred silver bearing solder over, you know, electrical solder. These will probably crack, but, but maybe they won't. So I'm not going to bolt it all together because I'm going to have to take it right back apart again. But what you can see... And these aren't quite fully pressed in, but that's also fine. They're in far enough. What you can see is now it, it rotates really well, but when I push on it like this, I have almost no wiggle on it, whereas before I had a, at least a sixteenth of an inch. So that's a, a pretty reasonable way to solve that. Um, nylon would be fine, like I said. I, I just I use what they had available. And, and realistically, a lot of times that's what you've got to do. So, okay, so yeah, that's much, that's gonna be so much better. We're gonna want to drill a hole and luckily there's this nice witness mark for the bottom of that. We wanna be a little bit inside of that uh, cause we'd like to have a little bit of height. And cause this, this, uh, this actuator is qu quite a bit stronger than it needs to be. So we're going to go in about, that's about an inch. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to offset about an inch. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll use these, this size standoff. So that'll make that pretty easy. So I'm going to drill that hole half inch and we're going to solder another bushing in uh, to, to, to support this. And there's a little bit of wiggle on it, but it'll slide nicely and it'll support it if it, if it needs to. So I think that's going to be the way to do it. I should have absolutely filmed myself hammering it in, but there you go. There's a little bushing in there. Um, hopefully, I didn't. So there's a little problem where that holds that edge up just a little bit, but it's just in that area. So we're going to just uh, whoosh, snip that right off and uh, should be going. I don't know if you hear that click, but now it goes down as far as it needs to, and it's not really sitting on that bushing anymore. So we just clearance that a little bit. So let's see if you guys can see that. Now I've got it like this, and all I'm really gonna do, because it's not a precision application by any stretch, I'm just gonna slide this up and down like that and use my uh, measure and my calibrated eye to get that parallel, measure that distance, and then I'm gonna take one of these little bushings, trim it off to length, and hopefully it's long enough. Uh, yeah, it will be. And, uh, and then put it back together. Magnifique. All right, we're gonna do 0 0.780 because 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 that looks pretty good to me. I'll be back in just a minute with this piece. All right, we're back and we've got our spacer, which slipped in the chuck, which is what those marks are. 0.782, I mean, come on. For, for what I was using to make it, that's pretty darn good. Um, The question is, yeah, that'll work actually. Ta-da! It was so easy, you wouldn't even believe it. Uh, or something like that. I will say the trick involves having a bunch of screwdrivers and uh, and if you had a friend, that would help. I was using one, my chin to push on a screwdriver to lever the thing as wild. So now we're ready to kind of test this and see if uh, if all our hard work was for anything or if this is worth it or if I just wasted an afternoon fiddling with this. So 
plug back into that. Uh, one thing to make sure when you plug your servo in, it says yellow there, you can totally plug that in upside down. And, uh, you know, don't put all your electronics on, uh, on metal chips either, but. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're plugged in. We do have to be a little careful because this will go further than it needs to go, so it'll it can damage it. But Sorry, I could play with anything su as successful as that for probably way too long. Let's take a look at what we're doing. Okay, the other thing is now that we've got those nice bushings in there, this uh, pedal has no wiggle at all in it, which is great because that would have made this work a lot less well. So I'm gonna turn you guys off and I'm gonna spend some time uh, fooling around with this to see how well I can get this uh, tuned to work it's going to be boring to watch me fiddle with numbers but once i have a settings file that works uh this little uh this little chip guy here is programmable via usb cable and a laptop so um i'll be able to post that in the video description so that you can follow along Okay, I've fiddled around with the software on here, um, and uh, I think I have about as good as it can get. So you can see now, instead of a delay, it just moves when you push the button. The only thing I would say that I don't love about it is that it seems like these linear actuators were really meant to be used against force rather than forced and it makes some little funky noises on the closed side and i wonder how long it will last but uh you hear that little chugga 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 i wonder if those are tiny plastic gears eating each other they probably are but i'm gonna run it till it blows and and uh then decide if i want to replace it with the same thing or try something different but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I did set the limit, so I slid all the way up to 100%, but I still have just a little bit of push, so it's not forcing that little actuator to slam up against a hard stop. So I'm pretty pleased with that all the way around. So I'm gonna put the base back together again, package this up a little bit. I've got this lovely little uh, thing that supposedly will hold the LAC and I can maybe stick it on the inside and uh, Yeah, so when I get all that done We'll be back Okay, the next part is just going to be mounting this potentiometer which uh, If this works out, I'll make a housing for it and whatnot But for now, I'm just gonna zip tie it somewhere around there But I also don't know if this is more or if this is more and some of that depends on how I wire it so I'm going to just leave that, but I'm going to zip tie the cable down the length of it. And for cable, roughly a hundred foot length of whatever the heck this is, this was on one end of it. So no, no real idea what that was for, but that's okay. Cause it's a multi-conductor cable. It's of reasonable quality. And more importantly, it was at a uh, radio shack. I'm going to start and leave myself some slack and just go down the whole length of it and throw a zip tie on. And that's it. Okay, so the cable's all zip tied together. You'll see that in a minute. But next we're gonna put this on the end of that. So one thing to note, there is a tiny screw inside that hole. It is left hand thread so you tighten it up it goes in and then this end slides out if you loosen it that extends and it comes into there and holds it in place 
Don't ask how long it took me to figure that out. And then these here and here are just cord grip pushers, basically. Okay, so there's uh, black, white, and blue, and then there's this little red coaxial guy in there, but we're not gonna use him. So for the sake of, uh, of ease, um, black will be black, white will be white, and uh, blue will be red. Oh, and always remember to put this part on the cable before you solder the end on. Eventually you'll learn. Oh, I'm hoping eventually I'll learn. Okay, so one is plus is blue, two is black is minus, three is white is signal. I seem like I'm a broken record repeating this stuff, but you've no idea how many times I've forgotten because I wasn't quite paying attention the right way. So you just gotta make sure you don't twist the wires together putting it in. Slide that up in there. There we go. Unscrew this. Probably. No, screw it in. Screw it in to push it out. And then now it's pushed in there and that won't come out. And then give these a nice hard tighten and that'll keep the cable in place. Okay, so now that's it. There's your cable end. Just throw it on the floor. Nothing broke, actually. All right, so now you've got this and you've got that. And bam, you've got one of the cables plugged in. The other end is just going on the power supply. I'm gonna do that. Uh, once that's all done, I'm gonna put this box together and we'll probably jump to uh, something like uh, very near completion. So as you can see, this wire is plugged in here for the potentiometer. This is the power. The power supply is sitting right here. When it all works, I'll probably tidy it up. And then on the welder, on the front of the welder, uh, there we go. Underneath this cover is an outlet, which you can't see, but it turns on when the welder turns on. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go here. I did a little fiddling and testing with this and found out that uh, there's definitely some interference uh, with the high frequency start on. Um, it seems to not respond. I probably need a better quality cable, but we'll just call this a proof of concept anyways. Um, so I'm going to turn the welder on and do a couple welds. You'll watch this move here. So I guess to sum it all up, I'm uh, after using it, I'm, I'm very happy with how it works. The response time is a little bit delayed, but I have a bad habit of just snapping off my welds at the end anyways, and uh, this will actually prevent me from doing that. So could it be seen as a positive? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I definitely need to get a, uh, a shielded cable for the potentiometer, I think think that will fix it right there. Because basically, I mean, you've got the, the this potentiometer cable running down the length of the of the torch cable, which has, uh, you know, a big inducted uh, amount of noise in it from the high frequency start. So 
I think I think that would help and and I really want to do that because this whole point of this was because I have an aluminum bulkhead underneath the defender to weld. If it was steel, I'd just use the MIG you guys saw me repair in earlier videos, uh, but it's aluminum, so I want to get up under there, but standing on, and it's, you know, I got a lift. I got nothing to complain about compared to how I used to have it, but standing on one, kind of standing on one foot, try and do the TIG, try and do that up above your head. I like the hand controls better, and, and I always wanted them for this machine. Uh, what was definitely worth it, though, was replacing the bushings in that. That thing was flopping around, and sometimes it wouldn't shut off because it was so floppy, and if my foot wasn't on it just right, it wouldn't shut down. So that alone was worth it, right? We're, we're ahead of the game. The linear actuator for this, uh, give it a C plus at the moment. Maybe we could get it up to a B plus or an A minus. It's not as good as the real deal, that's for sure, because the real deal is instantaneous, and I, I just don't have a way to make that happen. But for, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks, you, you probably can't do any better. Well, thank you all for following along with this project. Uh, I hope somebody tries it themselves because that would be kind of cool and sends me a link. Uh, if you're still watching, you know, like, comment, or subscribe. I don't know. One out of three would be great. Uh, and have a great day. Just a final quick update. I was able to get the high frequency interference to go away by attaching a ground from here and the cable was shielded. So I just, just for testing, I just stripped back a little section of it and clipped right onto that and clipped that to the machine ground. And then I had to also ground the pedal to the machine ground. So it would, it would basically freeze the minute you lifted the pedal up. And now you can turn it on and it doesn't work because I don't know, it was working a minute ago. my high frequency problems went away. I also wanna say uh, thank you to Hackaday for, for putting us in their blog. That was a huge boost to a small channel like us. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we made it to 100 subscribers. That's kind of, uh, you know, it's a, it's a milestone for me anyways. Uh, have a great day.